number three. Yeah. Yes, I am Keith, a uh, university student. And just now you mentioned that the U.S. government is extremely influenced by the fossil fuel companies. Um, and actually, I agree with that because um, uh, you can see we can see that uh, they w they disagree with the subsidy of the renewable energy. And um, in recent years, U.S. refused to sign up the Kyoto Protocol. And my question is that to your opinion, um, what is the reason behind, what do the US government value most? Is economic position, the business industries, GDP, the environment, or is people? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, I guess it's because I'm closer to what's going on in the US um, that I didn't, I, I, I thought that these problems were uh, if not uh, limited to the U.S., at least more extreme there. Now, what I found, though, in going to about seven or eight different countries, which I thought would be more amenable to the kind of actions that are needed, is that this is general. I, I mean, I, Australia, uh, Great Britain, uh, Norway, uh, Japan, uh, and other European countries that I went to were, were, have similar problems, that the, the fossil fuel industry has undue sway, it, it seems to me. Um, that's, um, and it's very difficult to do anything about it, because even you try to communicate this, but as I indicated, the, even the public doesn't understand this very well. I, I think we could, if we had uh, the chance to really talk with people about the real simple type of solution where it make clear the need for putting a price on carbon and if it were done in a very straightforward way where all of the money is collected and not given to the government to give to clean coal or whatever their favorite lobbyist is, but rather given to the public, then maybe we could get uh, the public to understand the situation. But it's, this, is, uh, this is more endemic than you might think. It's not just the United States that, where the fossil fuel industry has tremendous power. Question number four. I'm come, um, from Beijing, I'm a journalist, and also it's one NGO's volunteers. I have two questions. One is uh, just now I heard you talk about your grandchildren ask you, you can explain something happened, why you didn't do it. But when I interview in our country, many area, it's, uh, that's area is uh, not very poor. But uh, if you ask them next generation, what is their life? They are say, we also thinking we ourselves not enough time and not enough money. So how can we thinking the next generation of children? So if you got like this answer, so how can you give them answer? The second question is about uh, scientists. You know, this uh, year, the, the China, we have a lot of uh, uh, dry and uh, flooding. But um, not many scientists uh, can say something. Yeah, the friends tell me because the scientists, uh, they are controlled by the government or company. So maybe if they are say some true things, they are lost money, can do something. So I also heard about uh, some United States, the, 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 the uh, businessman said, oh, now it's uh, the the whole world even is the best uh, company control the government. So I just uh, want to you thinking the scientists control the government. Uh, no, the scientists, uh, government control the scientists or business control the scientists. Like this situation, how can you do? Thank you. Okay, well. It's certainly true that governments try to control scientists. That's my objection that I've had in the United States, which is relative, uh, which I will then say is actually relatively good, is 
government scientists uh, uh, all of the science agencies have public affairs offices that are manned by political appointees. And they feel that their job is to make the current administration look good. Um, and that has not, I complained about that some years ago and was hoping that it got enough attention and politicians were saying that's really not right. But then a new government comes in and they don't change that a bit. They take out the other public affairs people and put in their own political appointees. You should have career civil servants in those, in those positions whose job is to inform the public not to make the government look good. And likewise, if a government scientist testifies to Congress in the United States, they have to get approval from the White House for their testimony. They have to give it to them be <laughs> the White House before they make the testimony and get it approved. It doesn't make sense in a democracy. You're supposed to inform the public honestly. Uh, but I found, boy, it's not better in other countries. In New Zealand, the top science, climate scientist there got fired uh, because uh, he said things the government didn't like. Canada, it's, uh, it seems worse. They've, they've been told all the scientists in the, this environment climate related area are told they before they say anything, they're supposed to get it checked by the government. Boy, it's, it's not good. Uh, the, the democracies are not working exactly the way they're supposed to be working. Um, there was another part to that question. Oh, the grandchildren. Oh, yeah, well, I think, yeah, part of your question was, uh, well, we already, we don't have enough uh, resources now. Uh, well, um, I think that the developed countries have more than enough resources uh, for comfortable lifestyles. Um, and that is actually, uh, a reason for optimism in the sense that we see how the growing population is putting more and more pressure on the planet and degrading the land. And, we, and population is a part of the problem. But the, de the, the developed countries actually now, most of them have fertility rates that are below the replacement level. They're, they have enough, and the reason that they are less than replacement levels, I think, is they do have uh, enough resources for uh, comfortable lifestyles. And, but we need to make sure the rest of the world, the undeveloped world, has the ability for a, a, a lifestyle where they feel confident that uh, uh, they can um, continue without having 10 children. Um, it's not exactly an answer to your question. Well, but maybe I think John Liu's movie gave us a clue. Right? There was a gentleman in the lowest plateau who said that, uh, well, we, you know, my kids can't eat trees, so why are we growing all this back? And I wonder whether the answer is, I mean, we need scientists like yourself and lawyers and other people with a spectrum of knowledge that can help us to think through these different aspects. And then we need some kind of community um, uh, process where these things can be discussed and choices made. And mm -hmm. I guess your message yeah. to us from a, a, a scientist is we actually need to try and do some of these things relatively quickly right. now. And then the different scientists like John and others have shown us that we know enough right, because there's a lot of science that already gives us a good part of the answer. And secondly, is there's actually quite a lot of cheap and, and known uh, solutions that we can try out. So I guess the question for all of us is, if you know this in your heart, that these are the things we can do, what is the process that we need in our own society to have that discussion so that we can take some steps? Mm -hmm. Would that be a, a good That's answer? a very good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>